Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day directly from my basement. Yes, we are in uh, quarantine or self-isolation, uh, and just like everybody else out there, and hope you're all doing well. I know that there's a lot of pressure and a lot of stress out in the world right now, and what EPN is all about is uh, focusing on the cool things to be excited about and to dig in uh, into the entertainments, whether they're video games or movies or television shows or cool technology, to have some fun with all of that stuff. Yesterday, I um, dedicated the show to a whole bunch of different groups of people, uh, a lot of our first, uh, you know, frontline uh, defenders out there, a lot of the hospital staff and, and a lot of people that are taking care of people uh, during this crazy time. And that stands every day, by the way. Uh, but I also wanted to give a special shout out to all of the hotel workers that are out there. Pat, uh, Pat Clement uh, commented on our rundown yesterday and said, I forgot to mention hotel workers. And of course, they are dealing with all kinds of uh, really heavy pressure right now because they've got people staying in hotels and they're checking out of hotels and they're freaking out about whether they can get on airplanes. That's happening all over the world right now. Um, so much love to everybody that is uh, dealing with this crisis, this international crisis firsthand and, uh, you know, it doesn't have the luxury to be able to be at home and uh, uh, quarantine themselves like a lot of us do out there. I recognize how challenging this is for everybody out there. Um, so let's try and have some fun. All right. That's what the rundown is all about. Let's get started with your rundown. Activision really sees the value in re-releasing old video games, even some that might not be as old as you think. The publisher is apparently working on a remastered version of their 2009 game, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. No official announcements have been made, but a rating for the unannounced project has popped up on the official South Korean Game Ratings website, where it's called Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered, so it probably won't have the game's hit multiplayer component. Activision already released a remastered version of the first Modern Warfare game back in 2016, not to be confused with the all-new reboot, also titled Modern Warfare, which deployed last year. It's also worth pointing out that the original Modern Warfare Warfare 2 is already backwards compatible on the Xbox One and therefore will likely be backwards compatible on the next gen Xbox Series X. Hopefully the new remastered version has something new to win over longtime fans. Yeah, and that is the kind of the weird situation that we get into with backwards compatibility and the sort of classic game resurgence and the idea that, you know, old software is still viable and still super fun. Sometimes we do get these weird conflicts. I remember when Burnout Paradise Remastered was uh, released and I'd already installed on my Xbox One the 360 version of Burnout Paradise. And I was like, that looks pretty good. And then the remastered version came out. It was, oh my God. And it is a weird time that we could have 4K re-releases of great games that still play and look great today. Personally, I would rather that publishers and developers work with hardware manufacturers and graphics card manufacturers to find out solutions to smartly up classic stuff and then take that information and give us new entries in some of these valuable franchises you know maybe we don't need many new entries in the call of duty franchise but i do like the fact that the classics are being remembered that is the thing that i will underline it's great that we still remember classic games and we can still find a way to play those classic games <laughs> It looks like a Star Wars fan favorite animated character might be heading to live action for the first time. Clone Wars and Rebels hero Ahsoka Tano is rumored to be appearing in the second season of the Disney Plus series The Mandalorian. Slash Film reports that Lucasfilm has hired Daredevil and Luke Cage star Rosario Dawson to play the live action version of the character who will presumably encounter the Mandalorian and his budding Jedi sidekick Baby Yoda. Ahsoka Tano has never appeared in live action before although she was heard at the end of The Rise of Skywalker where she was voiced by Ashley Eckstein, reprising the role from the TV shows. I am no Jedi. Ashley Eckstein also voices her in the new seventh season of Clone Wars, which is streaming now on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> Now this is some fantastic news, isn't it? I love Rosario Dawson. I think she's a wonderful actor, and I thought she was one of the best parts about the uh, Netflix Marvel shows, honestly. I thought she was awesome in that, and I think she's going to be really, really solid as Ahsoka Tano. I can't wait to see how this, you know, animated character becomes a live-action creation, but, you know, Dave Filoni is at the helm here. He's one of the top people in charge of The Mandalorian. I love the first season so much. 
Honestly, I think it was my favorite show of 2019. I just freaking adored it. It was so close to the vibe and the feel of classic Star Wars. Very excited to see this all come together. And this is fantastic news. Great casting and a little bit of light that we need on darker days like this. Yeah? I won't leave you. Yet another big movie has gone onward and been released digitally a lot earlier than expected. Disney has jumped the gun and released the Pixar movie Onward on digital platforms just two weeks after it debuted in theaters. It's available to rent or buy later today and will be streaming on Disney Plus next week. Onward had a pretty good opening weekend, but in its second week, it barely broke $10 million due to the panic surrounding COVID-19. Oh no. Pretty much every big movie that's already been released is now launched digitally and looking ahead, almost all big movies slated to be released in the coming weeks and months has been pushed back. Nothing lasts forever. And I think it's only a matter of time before that Black Widow announcement for digital streaming becomes a reality. It would be a huge boost for Disney Plus. You know, if Disney really wanted to get a lot of subscribers to Disney Plus, that's how you do it. You put a huge, huge project like that. And we've got a, a little bit of a wait for the Falcon and Winter Soldier series and WandaVision and Mandalorian season two. If you want to get everybody on board streaming Disney Plus right now, you say, well, you know what? We can't hit theaters with Black Widow, but here you go, Disney Plus, you get to stream it right now. I think it is time for uh, the movie studios to kind of pull the trigger on this. It, honestly, it just makes it all a, a little more comforting. Not only is it comforting, but it also is going to be less confusing. And there's going to, for the companies and for the consumers, the viewers of these movies, will have a clearer understanding of when to watch them, where to watch them and how to safely watch them. Because even when the movie theaters open up, there's still gonna be a lot of trepidation, you know? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Natasha, don't slouch. I'm not slouching. You're going to get a big hunch. Mm, listen to your mother. It turns out the annual Game Developers Conference, or GDC, hasn't been canceled, it's just been postponed. The GDC organizers have announced that they'll be holding a new event called GDC Summer this August. Like the normal GDC, it will take place in San Francisco's Moscone Center, but will be a little shorter, only running three days instead of a full week. It will still have new panels from some of the biggest game makers, and game developers will have a chance to meet and catch up with each other. The real GDC was supposed to be happening right now, but it was canceled along with another big video game event, E3. GDC 2021 is still on the schedule. I think it's kind of crazy that GDC has announced a new date basically on the same day that California has gone into lockdown and said that everybody has to stay home. I think it's a bit premature to be booking things for the summer. I really do. The word is that this thing is going to be around for a little while. It's not going to be something that's easily lifted, but let's hope that this all comes together and let's hope that we can go to GDC 2020 in August. That would be great. All the big sports events have been shut down, but one has turned to video games in order to stay in the race. With the real-life Formula One Grand Prix on hold until further notice, the Racing League has instead launched the new Formula One Esports Virtual Grand Prix using the Codemasters F1 2019 video game. The idea is to recreate the same tracks and conditions that you'd have in the real-life Grand Prix, only digitally, and it's not just pro gamers who will be racing. Real-life F1 drivers, including stars like Max Verstappen and Simon Pagano, will be racing as themselves in the game. The first Virtual Grand Prix will be streamed online this Sunday with more coming until the real life Grand Prix resumes. I think more sports are definitely going to be doing this. I think that, you know, the visuals on sports games these days are already incredible and we haven't even entered into the next gen of consoles. And I think that they will hold up and I think people will watch. I think it'd be pretty easy to orchestrate online competitions with real life athletes. And I think it would totally spark people's imaginations to get their friends together and get cameras on themselves and have some fun that way too. But yeah, I think the networks and the broadcasters should absolutely be turning their attention to video games. Good for the sports industry, good for the video game industry, and good fun. So yeah, this is exciting and I think it's cool and it's extremely positive. <laughs> We're still waiting for a new Splinter Cell game, but in the meantime, hero Sam Fisher is sneaking into another Ubisoft title. Sam Fisher is set to appear in new DLC missions for Ghost Recon Breakpoint. The new missions will land on Monday, and judging by the teaser trailer, we'll see Fisher join forces with the Ghosts to take on the game's robotic enemies. I might need your help for a way yet. Best of all, Sam Fisher will once again be voiced by the legendary Michael Ironside, whose long acting career in various film and television projects is so good, it'll make your head explode. He's not the only crossover character reappearing in the new missions, because they'll also include the Terminators, which were added to the game in past DLC. Ever heard of something called a Terminator? This won't be Ironside's first time going up against a Terminator, by the way, because he battled Arnold Schwarzenegger in the classic film Total Recall. See you at the party, Richter! 
You'll need to have the Year 1 Pass for Breakpoint in order to unlock all the missions. Fisher appeared in the last Ghost Recon game, Wildlands, and fans have been hoping that Ubisoft will make an all-new Splinter Cell game for many years. And I'm one of those fans. I liked when they deviated from Michael Ironside, but I sure would like a new Sam Fisher Splinter Cell game with Michael Ironside. I think that would be awesome with new technology. I think Ubisoft has been really focused on always online experiences, lots of massive open world games. A lot of them have been single player, but there's been a real focus on keeping people in ecosystems for such a long time. And I don't know if that really gels with the philosophy of Splinter Cell, which has been mission-based, but I think there exists a real opportunity to bring back that single player with an epic, you know, God of War or better caliber Splinter Cell, not reboot, but, you know, a new installment, but something for the modern age and something maybe for next generation machines. Let's go for a ride. All right, that's it for our rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again on Monday with a brand new rundown for you. Uh, in the meantime, though, over the weekend, we're going to have a classic episode of Electric Playground from 2001, so make sure you check that out. We've also got our regular Sunday feature for you guys, and I think a lot of you are going to find it quite useful. So please tune in for both the classic episode and for our Sunday feature, as well as all the other content that we make. If you dig this channel, please consider subscribing. Please like this video. If you like the video, uh, you can share this with all your friends. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We will see you soon. And until then, play forever.